Oh, nice to see so many. Nice to see so many people here. Um, whilst I'm at the front, I'm not really. I'm just going to talk in the microphone. Really, not really actually give a presentation of any description. Um, so, welcome to the BSP and meetings, Boff. So, I think it might be useful at first to um, get a sort of census of who's here, like who is thinking, who's arranged a boff in the past, who's um, thinking of doing one, or what about attendees and things like that. So who's, who's been to a BSP or a boff? If you can put your hands up, that would be, yeah. yeah it's, it's cool, almost all. Um, who would like to go to one? I guess everyone kind of makes sense, obviously. Um, and, um, oh, could someone actually be setting up a gobby thing, a doc, whilst we're doing this initial stuff? Someone, does someone know the gobby, blah, or whatever we're using these days? Ah. Just set that rolling while we're chatting. Um, yeah, so who would like to arrange a boff? Uh, a BSP meeting. Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> I think you are, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the other people, what what were they thinking of getting from this? Um, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So a couple of things. Um, I was speaking to Avika the other day that we're developing a lot of contacts in India um, and they might be interested in organising gatherings. Um, maybe people from other places might want to visit them when they do that. So maybe we could talk about that for a few minutes. Um, and there's another event. I've been invited to a hackathon for girls um, that they're organising in Kosovo. And so just looking for feedback that I can give to those people um, to help them run their event. Right. Um, so there are lots of these other things where Debian can support people with events um, in different ways. And I just wanted to see if any of these things might, um, you know, if people might have ideas for them or anything else that we can do. So. All right. Okay, cool. Anyone else? Um, I've been to several BSPs. Uh, most of them were traditional ones. Uh, at least I, um, I have no better term for that. Like you go there, you expect people to join and find bugs and prepare packages. And as a DD, you just have to overlook this. And I, I mean, double check this and upload. Like you're just a random automated signer or something, and it's it was great to to see new people join and then apply for NM and DD and and whatever. But I went to a, not really a BSP in Paris in May, uh, which was a bit more than a BSP. Uh, I mean, there were many people joining. Like, oh, how can I do uh, something for Debian? Uh, I don't know anything about bugs, maybe I do some graphic stuff and so on. And maybe it, it would be interesting to have BSP um, uh, have some track to help people uh, help Debian in some way that are not only squashing bugs, especially when we are late in the release cycles, the, the RC bugs are just crazy hard. Yeah. So. It was uh, possible to, to ask uh, people, what do you want to work on, like Python, and uh, teach them about the dashboards uh, thing, and then uh, help them understand how to interact with the BTS and so on. But sometimes they would only look at packaging a new upstream version, which is not really bug squashing, but still helping uh, maintainers. So squashing bugs is good, but um, maybe this could be uh, a bit more generic mm -hmm. in a, a way to help the distribution and not only squashing bugs with heavy hammers. So, right. Uh, I would 
Yeah, I mean, I guess being flexible to who shows up, right? I mean, that just kind of makes sense. Hopefully people would do that. Do you think the name is putting people off? Because it's bug squashing or? I, I guess the, the, uh, the acronym is a bit mysterious for newcomers because BSP, so many TLA and you see what I mean? So um, maybe we should have something more uh, explicit and or welcoming, mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, I didn't think about anything before coming here, so mm -hmm. um, how to help Debian? It's a bit long, but it's a bit more explicit than BSP, so. Yeah, well, I, we wouldn't have to come up with a name right now, but uh, yeah, because there are clearly some people, this is the one at the Mo Mozilla offices, right? Exactly. And what was the attendance there? It's pretty high, wasn't it? Um, I don't have the numbers, and I guess the report is coming in a bit late for whatever reason, but uh, there were many people there, and so many uh, different skill sets and questions, uh, like some attendants wanted to have some packaging 101 uh, uh, training session because they didn't know how this worked and what the package build package and as built and as root and whatever. So, and some people were coming uh, because sponsored by work to spend a day or two uh, on this or whatever. And they were like, oh, I know already all this stuff and I can just act in my corner and that's fine. But I guess compared to uh, traditional BSP that we need to find more people and with um, extended um, flexibility as far as question and teaching goes because you need to explain a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And if you're <coughs> tagged as the, the guy who knows the installer, you get to install and debug the installer when trying to run a, a training session, yeah. and that doesn't scale. Yeah. So I guess we would need more people than traditional BSP, where basically one DD can, can upload all the things. Yeah. So, but the, that's really um, interesting on a social level uh, because we are not all uh, uh, old hackers, and we need to share to to get more blood into yeah. the project. So, I mean, what I would do if I sort of turned up and there were a whole bunch, of, there were enough people to warrant some sort of sort of packaging tutorial or something, I would perhaps I don't know go through the DevComp slide archives and just find some packaging tutorial there. Yeah, true. But um, organizing some things in advance, working out who's going to be there, what they're going to... Yeah, I guess on the wiki pages for all these things, like, you know, I'm thinking of turning up, what am I thinking of doing? And for someone that could be some obscure RC bug that only they can fix because it's super technical, but it could be, I would like to package. And then in advance, you will perhaps might know that, oh, there's two or three people who are newbies. Anyone want to... I seem to remember uh, part of it was also on focused on usability testing, and we had uh, maybe sales people around. So registering on the wiki and being anonymous and so on wasn't exactly um, a good match. Mm -hmm. But on the general case, I guess so you just have to uh, say in advance, I'm interested in this or that topic, yeah. so you make sure that there are people to teach you that. And, or at least people who've been warned that there might be a, <laughs> yeah, cool. I mean, I guess it's just a question of the expectations for each different event, because if you do, on the one hand, if you want to kind of have a nice successful event and attract new people and so on, but clearly, you, if you say have a weekend event, you could easily spend it, if you wanted, doing tutorials on packaging and also things about how to use the BTS and interacting with other people in Debian and so on, which could be useful long term, but it's not necessarily what organizers of these events sometimes think of when they say, let's have a bug squashing party. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult to say, I mean, what's more useful, but it's, there's two different types of event at least there. 
But there's no reason to run them independently. Yeah. So. Sure, but again, yeah. you just need. It's. I think sometimes people in the project think, "Oh, let's have a BTF, have a, have a BSP," and um, imagine they're going to get fifteen hacking hours. Hacking. Yeah. Well, fifteen hours of fifteen people squashing thousands of bugs, and they haven't necessarily thought that they might. Even though they they try often to attract external people, they haven't thought about the implications of that necessarily. One question I'd like to ask anyone who's run a BSP or been to one is where they have failed or like been unsuccessful, so or things that definitely haven't worked. Um, so if anyone can, I mean, because I've always been successful, unfortunately, Sledge. Um, mostly. <laughs> yeah. Um. The trick for me for having a good BSP is just uh, making sure you announce it in plenty of time, um, encourage as many people to turn up as you can. You know, none of this is rocket science. Um, and to be honest, it helps for me, I'll admit, it's, it makes it really easy that we've got a, a very act good active community already in the UK. You know, there's a bunch of folks who will just turn up when you organise a BSP, and you know you can expect them now and every time. Um, I I do wonder how much harder it is for other people when they don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anybody wants to. Has anybody struggled to get people to turn up to a BSP? I've certainly been at some event in another country in Europe where they just had a, a couple of people who organised it and basically didn't really get many others, which was. It doesn't necessarily cause a problem, but yeah. Mm, last PSP that I went to in Mönchengladbach, uh, from my point of view, I went without too much, too many expectations. I wanted to um, uh, to work on something because it was two months before uh, release. So uh, on the first day, I was pairing with some guys and we were working on some crazy package on the second uh, day uh, basically I didn't uh, have much to do so I was a little bit bored I tried to find something but there was not many bugs uh, to work on from the begin be beginner point of view mm -hmm. so um, um, so basically from my point of view it was not really successful okay so uh, to have more wider uh, a uh, more wider uh, view on this, uh, it would be good for organizers to have some theme or some... Um, some what, sorry? Uh, so, uh, some th theme or some list of proposed bugs, list of, uh, of some, uh, I don't know, so, so some proposals or at least uh, in the beginning to, uh, okay, w we, we have those people who are experts in this or, or this or who want to work on something, and then we could, I don't know, pair on something. Because otherwise it will be, okay, if you know something, then you start working on it, and it doesn't matter if you are on the book squashing party or not. Yeah. And um, to go back to slightly what Kibi was saying, where it gets harder and harder as the freeze. Yeah. And if you're looking through this list, and you look at a bug, and it's got like 25,000 replies to it, and you just know that your 20 minutes that you've got left of that day is just not going to be that helpful. No, I think that can be a problem for people. We, can, we encourage people to have BSPs as we get closer and closer to the release, but for people who are not already working on some piece of particular piece of software or aren't familiar with it, it gets harder and harder for them to actually do much useful. So, hmm. um, what, I mean, of course, we we, of course we want help, yeah. but it's also, it, I think it can be a bit demotivating for people who go to their first BSP as a kind of, I want to get involved with Debian, and then see this list of bugs that they have no real chance of um, fighting. Yeah. To have some tasks for them, I mean, as in... I, ideally, but I, again, I'm, I'm, it's hard to say that you should make that a responsibility of organizers to do, because it's a lot of work to find tasks for new people to do. It's yeah. obviously much more interesting for the new people if they can have a real task that's going to be useful. 
but it's hard to locate those. It normally actually means someone needs to basically have done the work already, but then just leave a description of it rather than upload their change or something. Yeah, which is a bit, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, just one comment on that. There was a discussion recently, um, actually it wasn't so recently, I think it might have been a year or two ago, about putting tags mm -hmm. in the uh, BTS mm -hmm. on issues that might be easy for newcomers, things that um, applicants for GSOC could do those bugs or whatever. Um, they might not be release critical bugs either, um, but they're still useful for someone who's building a package for the first time. So I'm not sure if that's progressed, if anyone's tried tagging the bugs. I seem to recall that, mm -hmm. but I, can't, I don't know the current status. Yes, there are a lot of bugs in the BTS tag newcomer, but not everybody is, is using them. Um, maybe it's going to be a good plan to actually publicize that more, make it more, more visible. Um, I mean, when I've run BSPs, yes, it can be difficult to find things for, um, for non-DDs, you know, ju just you know, local interested people to get involved with. Um, yeah, it, it's hard. And actually, yeah, so coming up with this pre-prepared list like that w would help a lot. Uh, I mean, what we've had recently is, picking exam an example, Andy is a non-uploading DD, um, has learned a lot about packaging and whatever at a BSP by digging through looking for licensing problems. Um, so I've, help, I've helped him with a bit of scripting to pick packages apart looking for problems in fonts, for example. Um, and actually, he's, le he's learned quite a lot from that. And it's something that he's he's carried on with, and he's um, you know a dogged determination to get to a problem that actually most packages would run away from because oh it's a licensing problem it's hard yeah but that's also I mean there is a more general thing there that although often again we're having a BSP towards the release trying to reduce numbers of bugs and we're thinking in that mindset for new people it can actually be easier to get going by doing what's essentially QA work to create bugs. Um, yeah. yeah, and more than just trying to install, because if someone turns yeah. up like, oh, there's no bugs for you to actually fix at this bug swatching party, mm -hmm. do you want to just try installing yeah. testing? I mean, that could come across a little patronizing maybe, or, I mean, it's clearly it, valuable. It depends what level, but I mean, there are, I think often as the people involved in the project don't necessarily get round to filing bugs on little annoyances. So actually, people who are new and not so familiar with the quirks of things might be better at getting doing that. That's true. That's true. Just a couple of other things that could be helpful um, is, I mean, for most packages, we can probably work out what programming language is involved if it's a Java package, a Python package. Um, so you'd probably end up with hundreds or thousands of bugs against each programming language, but at least for someone who already knows Java, if we can cut down what they're looking at to a list of, say, 100 or 200 Java bugs, that they can start to get their head around that instead of seeing that there are like 100,000 open bugs in the BTS. They can see there are maybe 100 Java bugs that might be relevant to them, that might be a useful exercise for them. Um, Another thing that they might want to focus on is upstream bugs. So people who have no packaging experience, but they're, they're good with Java, they might be happy to just go and put a pull request into GitHub um, and get it fixed there, and that will trickle down to the package in the future. Um, yeah, following up on your first idea of uh, finding bugs for specific languages, is Dept tags still alive? Because that's what, what that's one of the things that Dept tags was doing, and uh, it would be quite easy to enhance the UDD bug search to filter based on Dept tags, and that would be a way to get a list of uh, bugs for a specific language. Awkward silence. 
I had another topic I was going to raise, but mm. if people want to continue with the BSP theme, I don't want to interrupt. Uh, we, we, um, we can always come back. Okay. So one of the other things I've been discussing in a few places recently is using um, iCalendar uh, um, to gather data about different events in different communities, not just in Debian, um, but to publish them in iCalendar files and to try and aggregate that and search on that. I know there are some people who, you know, they have, um, or they want to go to events. They want to meet people for whatever reason, for their career, for learning, um, and they want to be able to search for events, you know, preferably with a free software theme as well. Some of them are looking more generically at anything that's IT related or anything Java. Um, you know, there are alternatives out there like Meetup, which is, you know, some people are happy using that. Other people um, are not so keen on Meetup being a proprietary solution. You know, it's a bit like Facebook. Um, and they have usage fees as well. So it would be interesting to build an alternative to that. Um, I think you could sort of aggregate iCalendar feeds from different sources in much the same way that the planet system aggregates RSS feeds. So if we were getting different organisations publishing their events, even if they've only got two or three of them each year, and we could pull those in and help people search, um, then that could also provide opportunities for people to meet. So we can say, oh, some Debian people will be at this other event and you can meet them there and get your key signed. Um, so there are lots of opportunities in that. Yeah. So tomorrow morning at 10, I've put in a BOF discussion if people want to talk about Debian local groups and what that might mean. And one, one way of instantiation of that is, I think, could be a, a better way of searching for events that are near to people and so on. And again, we do advertise this in lots of ways at the moment, but I think it's not, maybe we can improve things there. That's true, because I was immediately thinking I used the LWN calendar for that, but that's kind of niche. Um, and won't have like MISC pub meetups, right? Because they clearly some sort of limit. I mean, I've seen Debian BSPs on the, the LWN calendar. Um, I think the Paris one was example um, but you know four developers meeting at a train station <laughs> have, have you know for all, all people welcome to come along of course yeah that obviously wouldn't go on there yeah. so but it's it's true people do meet it even even apart from any kind of formalized groups people do often meet just in a pub for a few developers say when they might be happy for some newcomer to come along but it's at the moment a bit tricky to really advertise that it's kind of overkill to put out a Debian announcement that three people are going to be in a bar. But yeah. And the announcement doesn't really reach the new person either Quite, because yeah. the new person might not be on the mailing list, but they go looking, for some reason they're looking for something and if we can make it, if we can put it there so that they'll stumble across it either on a website or whatever else. Um, in Switzerland, um, the Linux user groups run a thing that aggregates a few different iCalendar feeds. So that's a frytermin.ch. Um, so that's much more simple because they all fit on a single HTML calendar. Yeah. No, and in Edinburgh, there's, well, and some other yeah. places, there's a tech calendar or something which is not mm. only free software type things, but again, people mm. follow to see lots of different events. But in, generally in the world, it's not really available, yeah. Mm. So. It's partly served by the um, uh, the events page on the wiki, right? Yes, it's and on the actual website there is an events page as well, or at least used to be. Oh, right, okay. Maybe it's been killed by now. I, no, it never was. Yeah. <laughs> well, sorry, I'm, sorry, it's on video, is it? But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another thing, again, with, I don't want to go too much onto what I hope people can discuss tomorrow, but one thing is on, it, that applies generally for BSPs and, so, and any kind of Debian meeting is that I think a lot of, if we want to attract people, it's also you need some kind of more than just one-off things because a lot of people, if they see one event happening in their area, they might, if they're keen, they might come along, 
but a lot of people it's kind of when there's the second or third event and they think, oh, really, I should get around to going. Mm. So it's, if you have some kind of... Well, one immediate question is, are there any like, properly regular um, Debian events? Like, as in not, I mean, there are obviously ones every year, but I can't think of any that are, you know, every three months or... The cheese and wine party happens every year. Yeah, but that's every year. Yeah. Other ones with... Yeah, Debian without. Zurich is the first Tuesday of the month in the, the pub yeah. by the main station. Such things so. do exist is the answer, right. but not... Yeah. And not it's sometimes there's only one developer there. It's often users as well. So, so there's always a meeting, even at Christmas or in the summer. Um, there are always a few people yeah. come to that meeting. So. Because I think you're right that the regularity is a. Um, but is again, really even if, I mean, I think the ideal is something like the same, again, someone who is going to make sure they're in the bar every month. Um, but even if it's not a fixed date, just the fact that it's once, if, there's, if, if things happen every six months or even every year in the same city, whatever, people who are around the area will more likely to eventually notice it, even if they missed this year's one, yeah. uh, even if it's only annual, if they missed this year's one barbecue, then they think, oh, maybe I should go to next year's barbecue, whatever it is. I mean. Exactly. In fact, that's a really interesting point, because someone will say, you know, what's, what's happening in London or whatever, and I'll, I can say, oh, yeah, there's this thing, or if someone um, is, says they're going to be in, um, in the UK in August, I'll be like, oh, yeah, there's this regular thing going on in, in the barbecue. So having those, rather than just a one-off, there could be a random BSP. Uh, maybe we could learn uh, this from hacker spaces or hacker communities. I know that for 2600, which is hacker home phone freaking community, they meet uh, in many cities, mostly in US, but even in Tel Aviv, for example, every first Friday or Saturday of the month. Uh, hacker spaces, for example, they also meet regularly, and you can go to web page and see and many people who, who go to different cities are, uh, are looking for those pages to see if there is uh, such group and such meeting in, mm -hmm. in any, uh, and gi at given time. For the BSP kind of angle as well, though, there, is, there, are, there will be many people who are in cities where we're never going to have a, a local regular thing, yeah. and even many people who are not necessarily keen on going to a big event. I mean, so again, it's some people who turn up at BSPs, it's not necessarily their first choice of how to get involved, but it's just aim the only method they've found. I mean, I know we've, again, over the years, there have been many attempts to have, well, we have things like Debian Mentors, there have been attempts to have more different welcoming IRC channels or different ways to help people who come from different methods, but it still is a, a sort of weak spot somehow that we're not, I don't, again, I'm, I don't think there's any um, magic solution, but it is a more general thing rather than just about these events. I mean, again, at BSPs, I have seen people, well, I've seen BSP or other Debian meetings, of work meetings, where, which we explicitly advertise as not having any introductory talk, um, packaging tutorial and so on. But in reality, if you get someone turn up, if everyone just ignores them and they sit in the corner, it's a bit sad. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's the same thing really online that again people there are I, I would believe there's quite a lot of people kind of hanging around online on the edges of the Debian community without re really ever quite getting involved just because we somehow we don't manage to make the connection mm -hmm. just another thing I would raise is that there are also um, groups that are not strictly Debian groups that have um, regular meetings like Let's say someone wanted to do Debian stuff in Albania. I would send them to the Open Labs group. They have people who use Debian. Um, you know, they're reliable. They have regular activities. They have fun activities. Um, we wouldn't need to set up another group or other meetings there. It's just it, the same in Manchester. I've been to meetings of Manchester Free Software. Um, there's probably not enough critical mass there for a Debian group, but that other group would um, would welcome people and would have Debian topics or a Debian speaker from time to time. So 
I've encouraged these groups to actually put themselves on the local groups wiki as well, so maybe this is also a topic for tomorrow. Um, but if people are aware of other groups that are welcoming Debian speakers, um, then that can be a forum for doing things instead of uh, stretching ourselves to have a dedicated meeting for Debian. So. When is <coughs> the local groups tomorrow? I th if I recall, it's 10 o'clock. It's been scheduled. I'm just bringing up the schedule. Yeah, it says 10 o'clock in Bo. Is this Bo? I think yeah. we are in Bo. So, yeah. Sure. So try to stumble in <laughs> with your hangover from the cheese and wine. And yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not that difficult. If people just come and sleep in here, then. <laughs> Very local group, some, <laughs> some joke there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So obviously, I, w I also run a fairly well-known big annual get-together for Debian people in the UK at the barbecue I host at my place. Does anybody else try to do any big just social event at all? Um, have you got anything, you know, anything to share about that? Anything that works well, anything that doesn't? Well, not to drop a minute, but uh, Tint Show. Yeah, actually, I was following on the streaming, so I kept that yeah. game. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> we'll so get you a mic. Grab a mic. How are we doing for time? So, uh, yeah, I wanted to add, I, I, I organize, uh, uh, not regular, but whenever we feel like doing a an, an, um, local event that is purely social in Ireland, uh, it's, a, it's a small community there, so, but we go, about. sorry? It's not moving about. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that works pretty well. We just go to the pub, announce it in all the local mailing lists. So sometimes we have somebody who's not regular Debian uh, contributor joining us. Um, like, yeah, the, the usual, just put it on the wiki, announce it in the local mailing list. That works pretty well. And then <coughs> it's starting to become regular, organized yearly event, uh, two times already in, in Barcelona, well, Catalonia, um, in May. Uh, and that that worked pretty well. It was purely technical, um, but very different from DevConf or anything because it's just the camp part. So just uh, sitting by the pool and hugging. Um, and I really like that event, so I will try to make it continuous. Yeah, well, I liked it too. <laughs> it's really Thank good, you. yeah. Can you talk more, how regular is the one in, you have in running in Dublin or? Well, when I am there, <laughs> which is not always, uh, I try to make it more regular once a month. Right. Uh, but yeah, scheduling things, and sometimes we are only three or four, so it doesn't happen all the time. But at some point, it was happening every month. Nice. Um, but that was still on an ad hoc basis. In other words, it wasn't um, the second Tuesday. No, you no, it was. It was actually okay. the second Monday of the month in the okay. same pub every month. So I had a rule. Always. That's cool. But the point is that if you're not around, People forget to call it, and so yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the problem with a very small community like we have in Ireland. And what sort of numbers were we? Usually three or four, six tops. DDs or um, plus? Yeah, DDs or DMs. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we had a couple of times uh, um, a guy joining us uh, that was visiting Dublin, and he's not the DD or DM, but now he's trying to get him more involved, so that's good. And there was another guy also who came a couple of times that is not uh, formally associated with the project that like to come and chat. And mm. So at least there's one case I can say that uh, I think it's getting more involved in Debian thanks to this meeting. So it's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, a different question on this is I'd be interested to know from people who have been organizing um, BSPs or other Debian types of meetings is do they th how do they feel about the current level of Debian money on these events? I mean, do people think their BSP would be 
a thousand times better if they got ten times as much mo money towards it, or it doesn't make any difference, or what? I have something to say about that, actually. <laughs> um, well, uh, Chris contacted me, but it was already probably too late and uh, difficult to organize it. But yeah, the, the problem with the one I organize in Catalonia is, is a bit expensive because there's no formalities at all, so everybody pays their own room. Uh, and so for people in Spain, actually, it was difficult to attend, which is not optimal. Um, so that because kind of event- pay, Sorry, because they're paying essentially holiday rates uh, it was, no, it was still uh, cheaper than a high season, but uh, paying like, uh, what was, how much was it? Like 50 euros a day? Sorry? They have low salaries, is the background. Yeah, that's the right. thing. Gotcha. Salaries in Spain are pretty low and, and traveling inside Spain is not cheap. So um, having some money maybe to subsidize the hotel room or something like that uh, will help. But at the same time, I, I'm doing this event with the idea of no setup. Mm. So, mm. no sponsors, no, um, no bursaries or anything like that. So, that's why it was difficult also to try to make it work in a way that Debian could help. But if there was some kind of, I don't know, lump sum that Debian could put towards the, the rooms or something like that, that would probably help a lot of people. Or if people can apply in the, in, individually. As long as I don't have to do it, it's fine. Right, because <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't do the event, quite frankly. No, it's not that. No, I will, I will still do it. Yeah, like, yeah. I've been involved in a lot worse than that, but <laughs> the idea was to keep the event uh, an easy thing yeah. uh, and not make it too complicated. Like, yeah. this year I organized it in a couple of days. I just called the hotel, they really know me, said, okay, we're doing it again. Which days work for you? Okay, like, do it. Done. Then just call a couple of calls to the bus stations to get updated timetables, and that was basically it. Yeah. So that's great. I guess that also means that you can attend the event because in some senses an organizer is just being the organizer and they're there, sure, but yeah. they're like, they don't touch their laptop because they're just so... That was my experience in DevConf 8. Uh, I only did organization and not even sleeping. Right, <laughs> so you, you didn't sort of go, you didn't do DevConf 8 in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... For this, in this case, it was great for me because I had a lot of work done, like much more than I will do in DevCon for any other place. Mm -hmm. So it's great to have it a low, a low effort event. It's more sustainable for, for a small team, especially. Yeah, especially when the team is one. <laughs> so I guess it would be sort of um, difficult for Debian to justify funds on hotel rooms next to a pool, right? I understand but, that. Yeah, I mean, but things around like travel, um, I, I don't see why um, Debian shouldn't, the, the normal BSP travel rules, which I think is 100 euro, 100 US for travel, um, couldn't, couldn't be used for that. Um, yeah, if, if, if every person will apply individually maybe, and we can say that, okay, this, uh, this event uh, is okay for this kind of funds, and even yeah. if it's not a BSP, because we are not doing BSP things, but I'll speak for yourself. Sorry? I did some. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, but no, I didn't. Okay. I, I was not close in bulk, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't organize a BSP. Um, but if something like that was like, pre-approved and everybody will apply individually according to their needs, whatever, well, then I, like, it will help with travel or paying part of the room or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just help people mm. to, to make it more affordable. <coughs> Particularly for those people, um, thank you. Yeah. Particularly for those people who are just sort of on the edge, like, ooh, it's sort of... Oh, there was, people, yeah. uh, there was a few people that told me they couldn't attend because of money. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to suggest having some figures like this $100 that was raised a few years ago or 100 euros um, can also encourage people to organize events. Like if they know that there's a possibility that they're going to get funding or that there's a minimum amount they will get, they will actually start thinking how can we use this effectively and have an event. Um, so there might even be other things that could be advertised, like if you organize a hackathon or if you organize something else, Debian will commit this or that or will guarantee to send a speaker or something like that. Um, you know, there's different encouragements for people to organize events. Um, because some of the requests, maybe Chris can comment more on the requests that he receives for funding. I imagine if they don't have guidance, some of them might... Um, 
you know, not know exactly what is reasonable and what isn't, but if they're actually guided to, say, organise something over a weekend and we'll give this much money, um, then they'll structure their requests around that. Um, I think that's right. I mean, I've had, um, for example, the Alioth replacement sprint. Um, I had some mails, you know, requesting sort of pre-approval for, you know, funds, etc. And it was sort of clear that they weren't really sure that this was obviously going to be available. And so my reply was like, well, yes, of course. Are you sure you just need that amount? I mean, let's get this done. Um, so I think there is some sort of perception there that can that could be modified and then people would be keener to um to organize these things and, and feel less stressed about doing so so which would be more more of them happen and etc etc well in in mexico city we have done um mainly the the debian day we have organized it and most of the time it, it is um, attended by a lot of people but for example, to, to organize a book question party or some sprint about um, something um, more um, focused on Debian, some topic, it is, um, it is more difficult because uh, in Mexico, um, we are few people into the Debian um, project mm -hmm. directly and trying to, to push uh, initiatives or getting involved. And uh, first we need to, to make uh, grow uh, the interest to, to participate in, in Debian, um, like translations, packaging, or even designing, something like that, because in uh, self-management we, we have achieved um, since 2010 to organize uh, events like Debian Day or even the release parties about Debian Jesse and Stretch, the stand install fest. So now the challenge is to to make um, grow interest about um, book question parties and and generate contributors mm -hmm. from Mexico to to Debian. Mm -hmm. I want to add, I actually have a lot of people come to these events, but mostly Debian users. And then many of us, myself included, have not. This is the first time I'm trying to come like closer to see what, how can I actually get involved in Debian. And so this is a barrier so far as, uh, but we should have a large, large community of Debian users that we've grown over the years, but we just haven't taken, haven't been able to get through the, that additional step to become contributors. And um, you've obviously taken that step, and what made you do that? Oh, I'm well, in the you're, you're here, trying to figure this out, right? Right, I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but what made you, you've clearly made some steps, at least mental. I made it here, right? No. <laughs> well, no, exactly. No. So in that sense, what made you come here? Instead of just being like, well, I'm a Debian people. Well, we've just been doing this for a long, for so long, have so many people in like, such a big community that's using Debian and um, and so feel close to the project even though I haven't gotten involved formally so it seems important because it's like okay we have a, we've built a whole community around this and we need to be more involved to ensure that right. Debian meets our needs and that we're and we're a part of that process in some way cool. but there's a lot to work to be done Jonathan has been kind of instrumental in kind of giving those introductions and how we can Take yeah. those additional steps. Cool. So, um, should we try and wrap up? Any any final parting thoughts? Cool. Thank you. Hope to see you at um, some sort of event that you organise. Thank you.